Hey everyone, so I have one name, Shiv, like Michael, the Prince. Uh, I, uh, I want to talk to you today about Layer 2 protocols. How many of you guys are investing right now in Layer 2 protocols? I see a couple of people in the room. How many are building Layer 2 protocols? No one out there? Um, so, what is a Layer 2 protocol? We have the base layer. We have a lot of applications that came out, and a lot of you might have seen those applications on stage here last year. And now we're building that capability that enables the applications to actually work in real life. So let's take an example. We'll start with a blockchain, decentralized immutable ledger, trustless consensus, and with cryptocurrency, we have that incentivized participation. So I'm going to give you an example here. Instead of using Alice and Bob, I'm kind of tired of Alice and Bob. Let's start with Kanye and Drake. So Kanye has a ticket to Staples Center, front row at a, at a game uh, that he wants to sell on Block Party for $1,000. Drake doesn't trust Kanye, but he logs into, into the app and says, well, look, I want to buy that ticket. So he clicks to buy. What happens? What's that process? There are three miners who are mining the block, and uh, they're working towards verifying a transaction. Those three miners are Kim, Courtney, and Chloe. So they're working towards mining that block, and uh, they ultimately mine that, mine that block, and then it moves into verified status with a whole bunch of other transactions. What's the problem with that? The proof is extremely slow, 15 transactions per second, um, the verification, in this case, it's a non-fungible token, so it's, it's slow like CryptoKitties. Uh, the identity isn't attached to the token, so what does that mean? Um, Drake doesn't trust that Kanye's ticket's real, and he wants to make sure that it's a bona fide ticket that's coming from the Staples Center. And cross-chain exchange isn't very straightforward. Drake decides he can't make it, and he finds a buyer on the EOS blockchain, and he wants to sell it to that buyer. So how do you enable that transaction? Right. So there are a whole bunch of new layer two protocols working on building that capability. Scalability, identity, interoperability. The, the most well-known is Lightning Network. Uh, there are a lot of other good ones. Loom has been working really hard on building uh, game-related uh, scalability. Um, and uh, ZeroX in terms of decentralized exchange for simple assets, uh, or now also moving into non-fungible tokens. But we had to build our own because we came out in 2000 and, uh, uh, January 2018 uh, and uh, it, there was nothing ready at the time. So tickets are really actually co quite complicated. There's non-fungible tokens, there's all the, all the things that I described and I'm just going to walk through that. So we started with the Ethereum blockchain. Why? Because it had the most proven smart contracts. Two, we launched a, a, non, a fungible token in ERC20 that enables payments incentives to, to encourage people to actually fill the stadium. But the tickets are complicated. Uh, you've got overage, underage, drinking age, VIP, seated, different seats. You don't want to have that front row seat exchangeable for something in the rafters. So that non-fungible token had to be created. So the ERC20 pays for the ticket, the non-fungible token is the ticket. We realized that there was a whole bunch of data that didn't need to be on the blockchain, so we moved that data into the metadata layer. And because we have a situation where you're trying to, you're trying to sell 100,000 tickets to Coachella at the same time, you can't have that running on chain at the same time because it's, it's extremely difficult for those transactions to execute. It's going to take a week, and all of a sudden, you know, you've, you've lost buyers, you've lost revenue, and whatnot. So we had to create a sidechain so the transference of the assets and the purchase of the assets happens within the sidechain. And then what we do is the, the transactions go on-chain algorithmically. So um, if, the, uh, if the Ethereum network is, is at a reasonable speed, you know, costs are low, uh, fees are low, and uh, the gas is low, you can actually move that straight onto the, onto the network. If it moves at a, uh, at a slow pace, then we move it to the side chain and then it algorithmically pushes onto the network in a P2P uh, sort of channel, payment channel similar to Lightning Network. So that's the algorithms that we created. And then 
We haven't launched this yet because we haven't found any other chain or partner that we would be able to interact with uh, via Atomic Swap, but we created um, tokens that are in interoperable via Atomic Swap. And uh, the, the piece de resistance is the, uh, the encrypted biometrics. Uh, what, what you're doing right now is logging in MetaMask and whatnot. You, you, there's a lot of complexity with blockchain, but what we wanted to have is a simple system where real people can go, you know, people who are already buying tickets on Eventbrite or Ticketmaster can go and um, you know, simply buy a ticket but still have a chain of custody. Now what happens is you, uh, you buy a ticket, you want to transfer it to someone, you want to transfer it to someone else, but there's no way that that ticket can be, can be rec uh, recorded over time as being uh, the, a part of the original series of tickets. So we had to create a way for users to log in and for the identity to be attached to the ticket and then deattach from the ticket and reattach to the next ticket. So we created that as well. And what I'm trying to explain here is that while there are a lot of layer two protocols out there building different pieces of the puzzle, applications themselves have a lot of complexities which an individual layer two cannot solve. And so what we tried to do was create our own, which sort of integrates various pieces of, of, um, of different types of protocol you know, capabilities and actually have them operate uh, within an ecosystem. So what I think is going to happen over the course of 2019 is that different layer twos are going to be working towards building certain capabilities or verticals that are going to enable um, certain features that are required for real world application like ticket sales. But in the end, the applications are going to have to integrate those for them to actually work in real life. And this is, this is applicable for you know, digital collectibles, for bond transactions, for uh, FX, you know, complicated structured derivatives. The same system could be used for something like that as well. Why do we do it? Just so you could buy, you could transfer fraud proof um, tickets between yourselves. And so what that enables is that we're able to eradicate bots and scalpers. So no longer do you have a, a stub hub, for example, where you, uh, you can only you go on, you buy a ticket, you don't know whether it's real, you don't know what price you're going to get for it. Um, so we ensure that the tickets are real. We cap the resale prices through the smart contracts, so you're not paying more than 10% on any transaction increase versus the previous transaction. Um, and then what the beauty of it that a lot of people are interested in on the artists and management side is that they can take a cut of a secondary resale. Right now, you know, they go to Ticketmaster, they, they say, okay, here's 20,000 tickets to Madison Square Garden, um, and, and a broker buys all of them up through bots, they sell them on a secondary market, and the, the artist, Taylor Swift, does not get to see any of that secondary revenue. So now, she has the ability to take a cut from the secondary ticket sale. What the identity does is speed up the lines. What the, the batch processing does is speed up the lines. So now we've got a fraud-proof system. Every ticket we know is real, we can move them extremely quickly. And we were able to demonstrate that at a music festival that we operated uh, here in Miami uh, in September. And through cryptocurrency, we're able to incentivize demand. Now that we've gotten rid of the brokers, there's no one to finance these events. What happens is that the brokers come in and pay bulk price for, the, for all the tickets, now they're not doing that because there's a lesser incentive for that to happen. So the cryptocurrency is an incentive for you to go out and bring your friend or uh, you to go out and bring 10 friends. And that's it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.